Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. This video is to bring you a closer look at the Hager. This is their part number. Okay. Um, this is their part number 3905, US 2060, inch and an eighth. Okay. Um, so what this is, 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 this is a, got it. Okay. This is a mortise thumb turn is what this is. And th this may be the first time I've seen a mortise thumb turn from Hager. That's why I'm stammering a bit. So this is a, this is a mortise cylinder that has a, a particular cam on the back, which is a Schlage L series cam. This is, this cam is meant to work on a, on almost all, not all, but almost all Schlage mortise locks. Um, and that is, some people will call it a beaver tail cam. Um, you know, it's just, it's a Schlage L cam because uh, many cams look like beaver tails, according to people that would use that term, uh, myself included, but we just need to be more specific. Um, so this features a thumb turn, but this one in particular features a, what would be considered a handicap compliant thumb turn, meaning simply that the size is larger for someone with mechanical mobility restrictions, handicap, uh, hand, etc. It's easier to operate the thumb turn with a clenched fist, things of that nature, rather than something that would be quite smaller that you really must get between your index and forefinger and then rotate. This I can kind of move, you know, without, you know, really rotating my wrist at all. But something smaller is really going to require that I do this. Um, this happens to be an inch and an eighth cylinder length. Um, under and the and and mortise cylinders, regardless of whether or not there's a thumb turn or a blank uh, or a key, it's measured from the underside of the head to the back of the cam, and that's where the inch and an eighth comes in. If this were to happen to be a dummy cylinder, there would be no cam you would still measure it from the underside of the cam to where the underside of the head to where the cam would be, but it'd be about an eighth of an inch short on that. So that is uh, engraved Hager on the face of that scalp plate. That's a brass scalp plate. Uh, speaking of brass, the entire body is made of brass on this item. And uh, satin chrome, 2060 finish, US 2060. Uh, I don't know what the thumb turn is made of. I doubt that that's solid brass. Um, I, I would really think that that's not a huge chunk of brass that's there. Um, and looking at the cost of the well, looking at the cost of the item, it certainly could be. That could be all solid brass that's there. Uh, even though I would expect it to be some. Uh, less expensive base material like zinc. Let's switch to the uh, screen view where we can take a look at some supporting documentation. Okay, here we are with the supporting documentation. Our description of the item is down here. 3905 Mortis 88 thumb turn. Inch and an eighth is the length. 2060 satin chrome and shipped with a Schlage L cam. Specify if different. Let's take a look at the product catalog that's here. Now, the supporting documentation that we have here, um, cylinder core and keying. This is an interesting document in the sense that it touches on different cylinder types from this manufacturer. As I lazily just scroll through, I come across our 3905. Um, apparently available an inch and a quarter length as well. Different cams are here. And you would be able to certainly request a substitution on a cam should you need. I would certainly think that the Adams Wright cam would be a common substitution, but if you needed to buy cams separately, you could by just that part number. Dummy cylinder we talked about earlier, typical mortise cylinders here, and you'll definitely need to specify the length of a mortise cylinder and the cam and the finish. Uh, the rest of this document does touch on the title of the document, keys, cylinders, and, you know, uh, key work, things of that nature, keys, uh, cylinder core and keying. Uh, small format work is here. Large format as well. That would be, uh, it looks like it's a Schlage compatible cylinder that they have, Large, which is typically called large format, LFIC, but Schlage calls it FSIC, but 
Others will certainly call it large format, and these would be cams that would go on the back of that. Uh, now, you get into the Hager proprietary, and, th and this is not germane to the talk discussion of a cylinder, but just to make you aware of it, these are um, Hager's proprietary, their in-house keying system. The H1 is this common keyway. They have a small multiplex structure here, um, and then cylinders that will take that H1 keyway. Housings. Um, So you're going to be able to do Schlage's, pardon me, Hager's version of their H1 or H family of key blanks. Uh, obviously seven pin only into these different housings. And this is a small format platform. So a small format was in the general concept was originally patented by Frank Best, founder of the Best Lock Company, who invented small format and, and had you know, uh, different patents throughout his career. The, the 20s, the 60s, you know, you'll find different patents under the name Frank Best. Um, and he gave birth, uh, in a manner of speaking, to the small format platform of which, of course, Hager uses that um, technology as a platform for interchangeable core. Uh, what Hager does, uh, which is not which is not unique to them, but they have a single keyway that will allow you to run a keyway into different cylinder types. So you can order um, a rim cylinder in a in a Hager uh, in-house keying system. You can order mortise cylinders. And what's interesting about this system is that they have a particular spacing on the keying technology, the distance, the center to center distance between the pins or the chambers, which is 140,000 uh, pin spacing, where they smush them, smash them all together because you're getting seven pins out of, or seven cuts on the key blank. So you have a tremendous amount of chambers, you know, seven in the cylinder that you can do a lot of things with in terms of ultimately expanding your key system because you have seven pins versus six or versus certainly five, you have a multiplex system which allows you to su substantially um, increase that system as well. Um, what's not obvious to me is how many, I believe this is a two-step system with zero as a maximum adjacent cut specification. I have forgotten that, I'd have to look it up. But anyway, what I'm blabbing on about is you would have theoretically tens of thousands of possible key changes on Hager's system. Uh, small format rims, small format mortise blanks that are here. We sell that 3907 all the time. Um, and then some keying uh, equipment. I don't have any pictures of it, unfortunately, but there it is. Uh, so anyway, the moral of the story on this is to show you the supporting documentation of the 3905 mortise ADA thumb turn. Let's switch back to the, uh, uh, to the camera view and finish up this video. But before we do that, this link to the manufacturer's page, that's a handy link to be able to uh, take a look at. It will allow you to see not only all of the Hager products that we sell. Uh, the Hager King service manual is here if you wanted to extend your conversation uh, of their King platform and a companion video that I made. And I've, I'd have to review the manual just because I have forgotten. I believe it's a two-step, or, or I believe it's a single-step system, but I no, it actually can't be. It's, it's got to be a two-step system. Let's take a look. Okay, here we are. So, this will certainly be what we call a two-step system, uh, and that is because of the interval or the increment that you see here, 0 0.0125, um, which means you'll have a cut on in parity, which means if you have an odd number in a cut, you'll use all other odd numbers uh, as well in your depths. Okay. Um, shallowest pin to deepest pin. So there are 10 um, 
possible cut depths here, and you'll use a parity of every uh, of of two, uh, which means you can't have a master key with a one, with a three, and then a change key with a four. Those cuts are too close together. And I definitely don't want to get too far in the weeds on this discussion because uh, it's not germane to the cylinder, but a couple of things. So you've got 10 possible depths. You have to place your keys every other cut possibility. If you have a 0, you can't use a 1. You can use a 2 and anything past a 2. Uh, you just can't use when it's one number apart. You also have 7 chambers, and they've got 7 chambers stuck together because the spacing is 0.14 inch. This minus this is 0.14 inch is basically what they're saying. Um, so they're grouped tightly together, plus the pin diameter is 108 thousandths, as seen here. So they're very thin pins compared to the standard, which is about, oh, don't quote me, 135 thousandths. I'd, I'd, I'd have to, <laughs> all these, you know, these dimensions that I don't try to remember anymore and won't stay retained. I can just pull up my kit and my caliber and tell you what it is. Uh, I know Medico is thicker. I believe that's 150 thousandths. Again, don't quote me. But the point of the matter is these are very thin pins. So they do that to jam them all together to get a lot of, a lot of spaces, a lot of chambers, seven chambers. The reason that seven is a good number um, for keying is because if you have seven chambers, you have in your keying system where you have um, 10 depths, let's say that you have a master key, that's going to remove one of those depths. So you're going to hold one of those out for the master, which means you have four possible depths that you can use in a master keyed environment. So you have four possibilities to the seventh power. And that number is going to be 16,384. Now, what makes that interesting is a typical six pin cylinder. Uh, you know, that's going to be a severely smaller number. And I think it's 4,196, 4 to the sixth, uh, 4,096. So, 4,096. So, that's a really. Yeah, that, uh, forgive me. I should have just taken the square root of that. I could have done that in my head, basically. Um, so now in a six-pin cylinder, you've got only 4,096. Well, the square root of this number would be 4 to the fifth. In a five-pin cylinder, you have 1,024. Um, yeah, 1,024 is what you would have. So the point is, is as you increase the number of chambers you increase dramatically the number of possible keys that can be generated. Okay, So that's why 7 is really important. And they use the 125 increment um, on, on, on their possible depths uh, because they have, um, because that's just the system that is used in a small format platform. That's called a two-step or a parity. There are single-step systems which are generally six cut depths but there is no problem with increment because they literally space the cuts out further away from each other because theoretically 0 0.023 is what's considered the break point for uh, having a key cut to a zero and a key cut to a one as having interchange, meaning, meaning it may operate that cylinder. Um, so Hager has a neat system um, and they do a good job with it. Now that 16,000 number that I gave you earlier that only stands for, forgive me, I'm bouncing around here, that only stands for one keyway. Well, you've got two more keyways that you can do that in, which means you're going to be at 16,400 times three. Okay, so you've got tens of thousands of key blanks that you, uh, key numbers that you can ultimately generate. Far too deep into the woods. Back to the manufacturer's page. You can see not only all of the Hager products that we sell, but also a link to the manufacturer's website, as well as a link to the full product catalog. Other encyclopedic documents that exist for Hager, okay, all kinds of stuff available. And that, that King manual is a good one. The Hager product finish guide is there. Hager does a good job with trying to show you what finishes look like. Now, this is an interesting thing to take a little aside on. Um, US3, everyone, well, that's let's go to one that everyone's going to know, or at least know it without realizing they already know it, which would be US26D. Oh, that's a bad example. 
Okay, you'll notice that they have two hinge leaves here for satin bronze. They have two hinge leaves here for antique brass and satin brass and, and bright brass. They don't for satin chrome, unfortunately. So the point of the matter is US3 means bright brass. It just means polished brass. But what's really cool about Hager, about this, is Hager shows you US3 bright brass in a 632, which really means nothing other than US3 on steel, or 605, which means US3 on solid brass. And I assure you that while you can tell these pictures are different, these images, in real life they also look very different when you put them side by side. So Hager does a nice job at showing us what their finishes look like when the base material changes, the difference between steel and brass or steel and bronze. They do a pretty good job at that. And there, there is a noticeable difference. And if you care about being true to the architectural finish, you will want to have a non-steel base material when an option of brass or bronze is available. Okay, Let's wrap up this video on camera. I'm running the risk of getting too deep in the woods on that conversation of keying. This is a mortar cylinder. Why would you use this? Where would you use this? Well, quite frankly, um, you could have a... I have had clients that have bought for me mortise locks that are entry function or some function that has a thumb turn on the inside. Even It could be a privacy set. A privacy set will have a thumb turn. But they don't want the small thumb turn that is C-clipped or true arc clipped or... Tim and nut, uh, you know, uh, attached to the to the plate to the escutcheon or screwed to the face. They want a full size mortise thumb turn, um, and you can do that. So you can take that small little thumb turn and not use those, and then drill a hole like you were drilling a cylinder, and thread a actual full size thumb turn into it. Some people want that. Um, where you would really see a thumb turn would be in an aluminum storefront door. What makes this odd is that they elected a Schlage L cam. Um, and inch and an eighth. So both of those together tell me that's probably a mortise lock is what this is going into. So they literally can have a Schlage L-series mortise lock or a lock that requires an L-cam that they want a mortise thumb turn or they need an ADA-compliant thumb turn uh, in lieu of an existing mortise thumb turn. You know, you'd really expect to see that in an Adams Wright cam with a cylinder collar. You know, that would be really common. Because uh, inch and an eighth is the shortest that they make in this. Okay. Um, yeah, so that link to the manufacturer's page will allow you to take a look at all goodies from Hager, a company who has literally been in business since the mid 19th century. Um, there are many, 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 many people working at Hager with the last name Hager, and they are all up the up the chain of generations back to the original. Uh, brothers, or I don't recall the history. I've read it and forgotten it many times. Um, I was recently in a DHI class, uh, DHC 307, Advanced Detailing Doors and uh, Doors and Hardware, maybe. Um, and the lead instructor was the lead specifier, the, uh, running the specifications department for Hager. And I said to him, "So, what's it like working for a company that's 170 years old?" And he said, "It's great." You know, it's just really, you know, Hager's got one heck of a lineage behind them. Um, you know them as Hager Hinge, probably. I did, too, once upon a time. They were really known for that. Well, at some point, they brought in a lot of other product lines, like exit devices, to complement hinges. Exit devices, lock sets, and door closers, and electrified hardware, and trim and auxiliary hardware, and weather stripping, and sliding door hardware, and a lot of accessories to go along with it. And where Hager really got a lot of traction, and I be would believe they continue to do so, is when they walk in, the rep walks into their distributor and says, hey, you're buying hinges, but you're buying this weather stripping from someone else, and you're buying your locks from someone else, and you're buying your closers from someone else. Don't you want to order it all on one PO? Here's our lock, here's our closer, here's our weather stripping. And you say to yourself, yeah, going to make it a lot easier to hit prepaid freight level, you know. And it's good material, it's, you know, and the bottom line is Hager got a lot of traction uh, with that sort of approach. At least it makes sense to a lot of people. But I'll tell you, when customers call me up and say, okay, I need an ADA thumb turn, I want the Hager 3905, no problem. I can order that for you. I don't stock it. I sell about two of those a year. It's going to take a couple of weeks. What would you like to do? Or I can ship it from someone else and ship it to you right away. A lot of people, you'll hear it often, no, 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 I'll wait for the Hager. Hager has loyal clients. 
and I, I certainly get that. You know, they, they have a good name on the street, and they work hard towards ev towards it every day. And um, you know, it's a it's uh, it, it's a pleasure to be a distributor for them. Any questions on the Hager 3905, Mortis Thumb Turn, or any other Hager product? Please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you.